The dailies every day on Core TV News. Beautiful Tuesday morning here in Lagos. Let me quickly run you through top stories making headlines on some of the Nigerian newspapers. I have The Guardian, The Vonga, The Punch, as well as The Nation newspapers for review. Now, let me quickly show you what the top story is on The Guardian newspaper in case you're yet to see it. How telecoms firms cheat, frustrate subscribers. The writer here says, despite increasing customers' frustration, telecom companies to push for more revenue. Okay, there's an interesting breakdown here. Number of subscribers to the four major telecom companies in Nigeria. It looks as if MTN has um, the highest with 58.5 million, Globalcom 27.3 million, Airtel has 25.3 million, and Etisalati is on its way up with 19.3 million. And then you have the revenues in 2013 for MTN. In 20, in, in Ivory Coast, it's 88.5 billion in um, Nigeria, Cheese seven hundred and seventy five point three billion. As a matter of fact, in all of the six African countries here, Nigeria, MCN seems to make more money in, in Nigeria than every other part of the world. <laughs> but then, how much of quality of the service do we get? I understand that in developed climes, when you have a drop call, you get refunded for it. I can't count the number of drop calls that I've had on my MTN line for a while. And I hope MTN can pay back for it. They're making as much money uh, in Nigeria. Well, away from that story, uh, female bomber kills 25 in Gombe. The writer's ESS calls killed in Yombe. Uh, in Yobe, Bauchi, military reclaims insurgents controlled communities. Government backs ICC on insurgency. That story continues on page two, if you care to check. Pope says Vatican administration is sick with power and greed. Page 10 of the Guardian. And it's 253 days after the abduction of uh, over 200 girls from Chibok. Now let's go quickly to the Vanga newspaper. Bloody Monday. Bombers hit Gombe. Bauchi kill 30. The writers here say 20 killed, 25 injured in Gombe. Motor pack on the front page of the Vanguard. And 10 die in Bauchi market bombing. Many injured. IG orders deployment of strike units for Christmas. And just before that, you have Labour Party disowns Alawakala, Tony Oboru orders. That's on page 8. Ah, but we saw Alawakala read this particular speech at the Labour Party. And we also heard that certain people had already given him the party ticket. You might want to find out details on page 8 if you care to check. World Bank's $1.7 billion coming to power sector. That's on page 14. The front picture here is a sad one. Uh, two days to Christmas, you have a bombing scene here, scene of the bomb blast at Duku Motor Park in Gombe, where 20 people died and 25 sustained various degrees of injuries. That was yesterday. All right, let's um, see what the Mr. and Mrs. has today. Might just be a comic relief from all of these disasters. Cynthia, I heard you gave out three bottles of granite oil and a half bag of rice to your friend. Why? And the missus is saying, the three wise men have done their beat. The women are now taking over. It's all right. You get details of more stories if you get to check. On the back page of the Vanguard, Ayimba, Pillars get easy Champions League opponents. And then you have um, Amun wants Keshi to hand over to Amokachi, a GD highest paid player in his club. And then you get all of the sports stories. If you uh, get the Vanguard newspaper today. Let's move quickly away from there to the Punch newspaper. Boko Haram attacks two state capitals again. That's on page two of the Punch. The writer here says kills 39 in Gombe. Bauchi bombings. The front page picture tells the story. It sings of Bauchi and Gombe bomb attacks. And then um, you have uh, sympathizers already showing on your screen. President condones corruption, says Oshimbajo. That's on page three. Amadou Ali. Named as Jonathan's campaign director, page three of the punch. And World Bank pledges 282 billion naira to Nigerian power sector, page 31 of the punch newspaper.
Jonathan votes 400 million naira for plane and budget 2015. That's on um, page four. And then APC's game plan by Oshimbajo, page four of the nation. And Acho back in three weeks. New electricity tariff for companies. That's on um, page three of the nation. 2015, PDP under pressure to name 21 billion naira cash donors. Balarabe Musa, others allege monetization of politics. The big question, who are the faceless friends who donated 21 billion to Jonathan's campaign? There are some names already. We showed you that earlier. And we hope that those can also be confirmed over time. And that wraps it on the dailies this morning. Make sure to get a copy of your favorite newspaper. But that's what we'll do better here. We're bringing you up to date with stories and news as they break at every top of the hour. MCR, can you help me check for a report where they talked about the prices of cow now being skyrocketed as a result of the uh, bomb blasts occurring in the north? I believe it was Uluwashi Adegoke that brought in that report. I'm joined now by our favorite public affairs analyst on the show, Bala Zakar. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, good morning, viewers. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. I can see you are wearing red. Looks like you are in the streets of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Santa Claus. I, I asked them, we to high yesterday, if something has already died already, or you are about killing something. I don't know if you started killing the fowls. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've started, but we've not yet concluded. Oh, we've not yet concluded. Yes. Like we that. hope everything is going to be positive. Uh, I mean, we're going to smile. We hope we're not going to hear news of... of human capital, especially Nigerian human assets, being wasted like this. Mm. These are assets that other countries try to harness. But in Nigeria, they've just been wasted, killed, and destroyed. Bauchi and Gombe again. This is happening about just two or three days to Christmas, at a time where the Nigerian military already assured us that they are winning this war against terrorism. At this particular time, how, how would you describe the progress on the side of the Nigerian government and on this ongoing war against the soldiers? I think regardless of the existence of, of the military, what I can let you understand is this. We have just discovered, or we are now in a generation where human beings have decided to, to just behave as if they are morally bankrupt. We have now reached a generation in Nigeria where human beings have no respect for human lives and human blood. We have reached a generation in Nigeria where people are not interested in Nigeria being among the committee of great nations, growing positively as far as macroeconomic indices are concerned. We have just suddenly woken up and discovered that we are now in a generation of Nigeria where people will be used to indoctrinate fellow Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And when they indoctrinate fellow Nigerians, instead of intro, in, indoctrinating them with civic ideals, fellow Nigerians are today being in, indoctrinated with criminalities would intend to intentionally and deliberately destroy the Nigerian economy. So I can tell you today Nigeria is at a crossroad. But there will always be a way out. Because unfortunately, for those who are blood suckers and vampires, right, Nigeria is just too big for them. Nigeria is just too blessed for them. Nigeria is too diverse for them. What is happening now is definitely a temporary setback for the Nigerian economy, for the Nigerian Human Capital Development Index, and for the Nigerian political growth. It's terribly cloudy today. The cloud is looking opaque. But unfortunately, for those whose interest is to cause harm, mayhem, and to render the Nigerian government lawless and powerless, it is unfortunate for them because Nigeria will pass this level. When we are going to pass, some of us don't know. The kinds of scars 
and wounds we will use to pass this stage, we don't know the magnitude. But we know we are experiencing political bruises, social bruises, religious bruises, economic bruises, and all other bruises that will retard a country. We will walk past it. And we pray that some of us will walk past it in our lifetimes and with greatness and success. I, I was with Joe O.K. Odumakin last week, uh, the leader of what they call the hashtag Rescue Our Girls. And she was talking about the uh, is, uh, consistent use of female suicide bombers in all of this class. Of course, the Guardian says female bomber kills 25 in Gombe. And then many people are beginning to talk about the relationship that exists between the suspected female bombers and the abducted chief organs. Does it ever call to you at all? When you talk about indoctrination, radicalism, and propaganda, it cuts across the strata of the human gender, right? When you indoctrinate somebody, the first thing you do is you change the psyche and the thinking of the person. Then when you radicalize the person, right, you embolden that person to go ahead with that wrong ideology. So remember, what you do is you change the psyche through indoctrination then you radicalize and the person becomes fearless or lack would now not have conscience at that point the human gender is irrelevant if you achieve it with a female she will carry out your your mission and vision if you achieve it with a male he will carry out your vision and your mission so the question is this when you talk about terrorists you need to understand that terrorists have a vision and a mission. The vision of terrorists, right, is to render a country lawless okay. and then a, a government powerless and irrelevant. That is the vision of the terrorists. Then what is now the mission of the terrorists? The mission of the terrorists is to apply all necessary force, whether brute force, whether guerrilla force, to bulldoze any human obstacle or material obstacle that will be on its way to achieving what? The vision. And remember, the vision has always been to do what? To render a country lawless. Because once you render a country lawless, then there is no rule of law. Then the next thing is to render a, a government powerless and irrelevant. Once a country becomes powerless and relevant, uh, irrelevant, then you foster your ideology. So when you talk about the female suicide bombers, from what we have explained now, and the tools that are applied in indoctrination and radicalism, once you become vulnerable and you become their recruits, and they succeed in ingraining that in you, then you can do anything. And it is in like manner that when Nigeria will come out of the woods, when Nigeria will come out of this darkness, we are going to have an indoctrination of Nigerians to behave in a civic manner. Then we will now radicalize Nigerians to reject anything evil. And then Nigerians will be emboldened now to behave in a civic manner. And when they will now move, they will be bold enough to stand and defend the territorial, right, the economic, the social, the religious, and the sovereignty and total integrity of Nigeria. How do you see Nigerians doing that at this particular time? Because we've heard people say, well, this is our country, and then it's a battle for everyone. Nigerians must stand up, speak against terrorism. But in the in such a guerrilla warfare where the other side that we call the enemy are brutal, they are ready to even die for the cause, what role do you see the patriotic Nigerian play at this time? Well, 
in difficult moments, right, the best you can do is to try and see if you can withstand the impact or the shock or the punch, just like what is happening globally with the falling crude oil prices. Even with the falling crude oil prices, the biggest mistake you will do is to panic and roll out measures. That was why when the crude oil start, uh, prices started falling, Nigeria quickly, in panic, rolled out some measures. What did we do? We devaluated the Naira by just 13 Naira. But before we knew, the Naira in the parallel market has fallen by probably close to 30 Naira. We rushed and we raised the monetary policy rate. And the next thing we did was to raise the cash reserve requirement. Immediately we did that. We just discovered that the Nigerian economy was not improving. What, does, what did that tell us? That told us that even in difficult moments, what you do is, first of all, to stand, wage the impact, wage the shock, even if it is negative, and then plan on strategies. Yeah. Then when you superimpose that on the security situation going on in Nigeria, it's the same thing. Before now, once there is an impact, people run helter-skelter. And in the process, you incur so much casualties. What Nigerians need to, to, to be encouraged to do now is this. Whenever there is an impact, as much as possible, let's wage it first. Let's try to weigh it and even decide on the direction to take. If you go to most of these parks, the moment there is an impact, just on stampede alone, so much casualties are, are involved. You know? But we know that generally you need to run away from danger. Collectively, it is a difficult That's moment. naturally a response to stimuli. Yes, mm. natural response to stimuli. But you cannot underestimate the number of time you need to keep educating the human being. Just like the way some people will take time and ages to indoctrinate vulnerables and make them candidate for negative destruction and to become blood-sucking vampires to destroy great countries like Nigeria. It is in like manners, just basic principles of physics. For every action, there has to be equal and opposite reaction. The terrorists took time, planned, indoctrinated, and have destroyed Nigeria or are destroying Nigeria. And for, fortunately or unfortunately for Nigeria, they chose a given flank that was an easy word, passage. They adopted a tool initially that they know they can use, which is very sensitive, the tool of religion. But when they cross past that and they notice their antics will be realized, they decided to go on thorough onslaught. But that has surprisingly made Nigerians to collectively now know that there is no interest to positively protect Islam. The interest is to destroy Nigeria. Whether you are a Muslim or a Christian, it is a tsunami of rascals, a tsunami of blood-sucking animals, a tsunami of people that are animalistic and have no respect for human life. That was what Nigerians have noticed. But the good thing, like I keep saying, is Nigerians now want to collectively fight them, regardless of our tribes, our gender, our political affiliations, and our religion's beliefs. Let's begin and it to... is that, will, that force and collectivity that will make Nigerians to be. Let us also begin to look at how equipped, well-equipped and insulated we are as a country against such attacks because um, a few days ago Michael Murray of the NOA and National Information Center talked about suspected uh, attacks on soft targets Correct. like markets like uh, uh, motor parks exactly the way he predicted it that's what we saw yesterday happened in Bauchi and Gombe I was looking at the situation whereby as a nation we have become vulnerable to that to such an extent that even if we got a green light and we suspected that it was going to happen there's almost nothing we can do to prevent such happening good the question is this when 
when when you live in a state of normalcy and just have to fight economic issues most of the time you will keep political issues social issues issues of extremism aside what is happening in nigeria today is a situation that you can best describe by saying that Nigeria has been thrown into a state of insecurity. But first of all, what is security? Security simply means freedom from harm or damage, right? But once you are thrown into a state of insecurity, it simply means you have become vulnerable. But at that time, it is your duty to ask yourself about the control measures that ordinarily you're supposed to have in place right first of all whether in difficult moments or in moments of el dorado you're supposed to have what we call preventive control measures detective control measures and corrective control measures when you talk about preventive control measures you are basically saying try and put checks and balances right before you get hit by danger it could be political danger as we're seeing now in the political arena it could be economic danger as we are seeing with the falling prices of crude oil and how we're trying to attack it it could be religious danger as sometimes we see in areas of sectarianism Right. Hold you for a while, Balazaka. Just a minute to take this call from Suleja. We have Kabiru calling us. Good morning, Kabiru. Merry Good. Christmas uh, to you. You are good over there. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Kabiru. You're on, Kabiru. Please go ahead. I'm afraid we lost that. When you call it in, endeavor to turn down the volume of your TV set so we can have a crystal clear communication. You can also follow us on Twitter. It's at Cool Digest Live. And you can also be a part of the show at every juncture that you feel uh, to contribute and make certain comments. At Cool Digest Live will be an alternative to the phone lines if you are finding how to reach us this morning. Please go ahead with the question. So, you see, like we said, for you to be able to check insecurity generally, and when we talk about insecurity, it could be human insecurity, it could be political insecurity, social insecurity, religious insecurity, regardless of the, the even it could be narco insecurity, as you experience in other countries that are heavily drugged laden countries with drug hardened criminals, right? So, but generally you need three things as control measures preventive measures detective and corrective preventive means prevent that thing before it happens whether it's economic collapse political collapse religious collapse extremism and gorilla attacks look for a way to prevent it in a situation where you are not able to prevent it as it is coming in trying to chop into your system whether into your country or into your government mm. or into your company try and detect it because if you don't detect it then it will get in now and give you the impact which will be the harm it could be political harm it could be human harm as we've just seen in bauchi and gombe it could also be political harm as we have just seen with the utterances of, of some of the political leaders. It could be economic harm, as we've seen now trying to experience deficit in our economy. But that is one. That means if you lose on the preventive mechanism and you lose on the detective mechanism, you should be able to do what? Come up with corrective mechanism. So you will describe yourself as a failure if you couldn't prevent you couldn't detect and you couldn't correct. How was the federal government fed by these three methods that you have outlined? To be honest with you, it depends on the balancing of probabilities. It depends on who you're talking to. If you talk to somebody like Kabir wanted to, to, to speak from Suleja now. I remember when the Madala attack took place. I think Madala is in Niger State. All right? That's Niger State. When it happened around that time, 
somehow, somewhere, maybe they put in corrective mechanism. Mm. It's possible they couldn't prevent it. They couldn't detect it. And it caused the harm. I remember the murder lie in Pal. But since then, I think Niger State has been relatively calm. So it simply means maybe they corrected it. After correcting and trying to remedy the impact, they now put preventive mechanism. Yes, but when you talk about the federal government, you're talking about the totality of a country. And the totality of a country sometimes, most likely, it depends on who you're talking to. For somebody like me who grew up in Maiduguri, right, I went to my primary school in Maiduguri. I went to my secondary school in Askirauba. My wife went to Gigi Konduga. I can tell you that probably I am not too comfortable because my primary school, Gombe, I mean Gwenge One, was burnt a long time ago. Some of us who couldn't collect our primary school certificates, we may never have them. My wife's secondary school, government girl's secondary school, Konduga, was burnt. So if you talk to people like me, just on that alone, I may say, mm, I'm not happy. But you go to other places again, some of these things were waged and controlled. Please let me hold you for another moment. We have Ahmed calling from Abuja. Good morning, Habit. Hello. Good morning. Habit, please go ahead with the contribution. Hello, thank you. Uh, the issue of these uh, institutions in the country is very tough. What the area of Kano Alad Muhammad's message says is true. Everybody should wake up and tell himself. Government alone cannot defend people. Okay. So my advice is for people to stand up and defend themselves. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution, Hamid. You can also reach us at Cold Digest Live on our Twitter handle. All you need to do is follow us and drop your comments as the show goes. The last time, the last person that suggested this was the Emir of Kano, uh, Mohamed Sanusi. And you recall the response from the alleged Boko Haram leader. Uh, what's his name now? Shekau. Shekau, who yes. threatened him and said that he was going to die for making such statements. W would you agree that it is high time Nigeria took up arms against the terrorists? Not only arms, but it's just, first of all, you need, it is clearly showing that the people who constitute these militants or extremists, if they are Nigerians, or if some of them are Nigerians, then that means they have become morally bankrupt. Mm. Because like I told you, I grew up in Maiduguri, and I know how Kano looks like. When I was in my degree in those days, do you know what it means for an emir to speak? Mm. People like me till tomorrow, I'm a subject to the emir. If an emir is talking, I don't have what it takes to look him straight into the face. Mm. And even in holy books, we can't see God, but God has made us to have parents and to have leaders. These are not political leaders. Do this traditional these traditional rulers, rulers. Do they still carry the aura that you are talking about? Yes, I, I can tell you if I sit today, maybe when the CBN governor, before he became the Emir, maybe when he's talking and I'm on a table, I can sit down like this and be looking at him on the face. But today, he has what it takes for me not to look him in the face. And that does not mean scare, but it means respect. But obviously, this awe and respect is not with the Boko Haram guys. Because exactly. There are evil and that, stories that, of that was why we mm. said the extremism has no respect mm. for the laws of a country. They don't even have any moral upbringing. Mm. So what that simply shows you is somehow, somewhere, there has been a bastardization of moral values. Mm. Because even before the present emir ascended that throne, we could, it was too shocking. In fact, that was when I knew that things have gotten out of hand. Because for people, especially of northern extraction, okay. to indoctrinate fellow Nigerians to want to go and kill somebody of the status of an emir, it's just like arranging for people to kill the Oba of Lagos, or the Obi of in Onisha, or the Oba of Benin, or the Alafin of Oyo. Can you 
imagine that in this generation and that was why i said our generation is almost behaving like a cost generation but there will always be a way out you know we have such great leaders we just need to respect and adore them but politically also our political leaders also need to show some moral discipline in their activities i'm saying this because today all of a sudden nigeria has woken up to a state where you see a lawmaker telling a fellow lawmaker that i will slap you could you believe that just a minute we have another caller from adamawa good morning vincent how's adamawa this morning oh i'm afraid we lost that we're having challenges with the phone lines this morning keep trying uh we'll appreciate uh, to hear from you we'll love to hear from you but there's an alternative as well all you need to do is follow us on twitter on our twitter and do at call digest live and you can also make your comments known your questions and your contributions on that platform please go ahead when you when you tell me say we have somebody from adama i remember some of my schoolmates mm -hmm. as i speak to you today i went to government secondary school as kira uba right that uba is just you have two uba Uba, in those days when I school, it was Uba Gongola and Uba Borno, but it is now Uba Borno and Uba Adamawa. You need to go and see what was happening to human lives, mm. the lives that we are supposed to be harnessing. When we were talking about building the Nigerian economy, we said, okay, we can get sugar cane mm. and all these things from those flank. Mm. You can get cows, you can get food, but at some point, people were rendered homeless in their country right but like i keep saying everything rests with our political leaders yeah. right these days the way a manner our political leaders talk it's a bit scary let's take patrick's call from yola hope this goes through good morning patrick it's all right hello yeah good morning go ahead with the contribution hello hello good morning patrick hello. Patrick, go ahead with a contribution, please. Oh, we lost that again. Well, you might have to make use of the Twitter handle. We're having some tweets already, and I'm going to read that out sometime soon. So just keep trying at Call Digest Live. You can also keep trying the phone lines and be able to move away from your TV set when you call so we can have a crystal clear communication. You in Andamawa? Yes. So we live in a situation today where a lawmaker will tell a fellow lawmaker that I will slap you. We've seen it. House of Reps members telling fellow House of Reps members, I will slap you. A senator telling a fellow senator that you are stupid. You know, leaders that we are supposed to be proud of. Because when we say we didn't want the military, we are now talking about democratic dispensation. But they are vomiting political venoms. We have just come today to discover that a, 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 a governor has no respect for a fellow governor, has no respect for senator, a senator has no respect for his governor. You see a governor abusing the president, the presidency also abusing the governors, you know, people rubbishing themselves. Instead of talking about issues, and the only reason why you see Nigerians looking a bit depressed, it's not only because extremism is trying to destroy that flank of Nigeria, but they are looking in like maybe two months' time. We will be into election moments, and their political leaders or the will be gladiators or political gladiators are not even looking coordinated. What somebody like me expected is this if I want to come and contest or defeat you as a local government chairman. What I would just say is this, if you constructed two roads, I will need to come up with the reason why I can do better than you on the roads to justify why I should be elected, all right? If you are now in power and your country is as great as Nigeria and you cannot provide probably electricity, I need to explain to people why my regime will provide better electricity. Mm -hmm. If you say your economy is an economy that is growing, I will need to explain to you why with your economy that is growing, the ratio 
of good health to 170 million, I will show you that it is falling down. Mm. I will show you that the ratio of good education to 170 million is going down. I will show you, I should be able to show you how the ratio of employable Nigerians, whether artisans, semi-skilled and skilled or high-level skills, is going down when you compare the value to 170 million. You see, when you go to organize democracies, this is how people talk. This is how people explain. I should be able to tell you why I can, if I construct rail lines, I will decongest roads. And when I decongest roads, then that means the roads will last longer. This is how people discuss. You see, from what I was analyzing to, I'm explaining issues and how we will resolve them. Let's try to but bring... But our political mm. leaders rather look at themselves, abuse themselves, mm. tell themselves, I will slap you, mm. tell themselves you are stupid, tell themselves you are cultists, mm. and that's not good. So it is adding to the depression. Every country goes through difficult moments. But in those difficult moments, when you look up to your leaders and you find out that they are looking refined mm. in how they will solve issues, then mm. you have some word, some hope. Because once a man loses hope or lacks hope, the next thing is dead. Mm. Let's try to bring all of this on. It, it, it's understandable that the challenge of terrorism is relatively new to Nigeria and that probably the federal government has a lot in their hands in handling this. Well, how do we also justify the, side, the fact that on the other side of the divide are millions of Nigerians that are now called migrants or uh, internally displaced persons who are not also being cater to by the government. Of course, we've had quite a number of promises, but the reality on ground does not um, in any way uh, is tandem to the promises we've had thus far. Is it possible that the government is failing up on both sides at this time? Well, it's, it's also a balancing of the probabilities. You understand? The question you just simply ask is this. If you put, let's assume there is an impact here, right? Or there is health issues, or economic issues, or political issues, or environmental issues. And you put the cure from here, and this is a pipeline, mm. right? The question you need to ask yourself is this. By the time you say you have headache, mm. it could be headache of the economy, religious headache, political headache. And I put Just the before you go here. Eh? I believe Vincent is online. We hope that um, we can hear from him now. Good morning, Vincent. If, if you're there, Vincent. Yes, hello. Yes, please go hello. ahead with your contribution. Hello. Go ahead, Vincent. Hey, uh, I want to support you at the other map, the map that Yeah about what uh, the area of promises. So I want to support you because one of the comments you made was during the speech on confronting the 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 the, 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 the reason why I want to make this comment is because you know the rate at which the 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 the, the are Oh I'm afraid we we're having challenges with that um, particular communication. Keep trying. If you can reach us on our phone lines, please do so on the Twitter. And you were making an analogy earlier. Y yes, and mm. after that, you just remind me so that I answer his question. He said okay. he was talking about suggestion of directly confronting the terrorists. Mm. Right. But like this one, I'm talking on the side of the government. Because like I said, it depends on who you're talking to. Mm. But I said, let's assume there is an impact here, negative impact, whether political, extremism impact, social impact, or health impact. And you decide to put the drug here. Okay. But between the drug that you are going to put, or the cure, or the finance, you have a pipe that will get to this point. The question is this. If you put a drug of 10,000, by the time it gets to where it needs to heal the issues, whether wound or health, will it be 10,000? So that is where sometimes we blame the government. If you said you're going to fight insurgents, mm -hmm. right, and you budget 70 naira, okay. by the time it gets to 
where the end of the pipe is it still 70 naira mm. that was exactly what we were also experiencing with the crude oil theft mm. in the niger delta because some of these international oil companies will probably pump 50 barrels mm. for example but by the time it gets to their flow station it may end up being 20 barrels mm. so at that point it tells you that some of the people that are involved in this line of process okay. that will help you to catalyze issues and have results or cures at this point are probably not doing what they are supposed to do. We have Eunice calling in from Benway. Good morning, Eunice. Eunice, if you're there, go ahead with the contribution. Okay, we lost that as well. Keep trying, guys. We'd love to hear from you. You can also drop your comments on our Twitter and do at call digest life now let's begin to also look at the economic implication of that if we have um, that report we might just want to play it now uh, talking about uh, price hike in some of the commodities at the market market no move at all Everything they silence. Every people they talk about money. Then they talk about politician. They don't release anything. So everything they tight. And Boko Haram they cost everything. Because everything where they come from not they, then they hide. Mohammed Abubakar, the Gawa State. Uh, this year market they fine. But we they think say market they move because since now market is not full market. So anybody where you want to come by, make you quickly come by market. It's moving gradually, but people have not been coming in so much as we're supposed to expect. It's better the government to see something to deal to it, because due to the messes, people are complaining so much. Okay, we're running off the segment now. Before we talk about the economic impact, what would you say are your practical suggestions, your practical uh, school of thought as we guess the ongoing war against insurgents? Well, what I'm going to do is it's just like the way Nigerians are contributing. You know, if you want to have a total bid, you continue to put it one after the other, bid by bid. Please, everybody should come up with contributions and suggestions. And if we can't be able to talk to government agents, we should be able to get directly to the president. Okay. This is my suggestion to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as of today. What I notice about some of these insurgents is this. Whenever they come, right, and they go to some of these areas that I, that I talk about, whether Goza, uh, Chibok, uh, Zuru, uh, Lhasa, Mubi, and the rest, they come in brand new Hilux trucks. Okay. And in the encounter, some of these trucks get destroyed. To the best of my knowledge, Toyota Hilux trucks are manufactured by Toyota. No two vehicles have the same engine and chassis numbers. Please, people like me, one of my suggestions, I'm begging the president of Nigeria, some of these trucks that they were able to capture get these numbers of the chassis and and engine numbers and call toyota direct one thing about the toyota manufacturers is it unlike bombs or bullets that you have many manufacturers if you call the toyota toyota anywhere they are in their head office they should be able to tell you when those vehicles were bought who bought them the first day they were containerized and after containerizing them, even the ship, I mean the port of shipment, please, even if nobody will help the president, let the president phone Toyota. Toyota will tell him. Because with, with the chassis number and engine number, you can trace straight away the day it was manufactured, when it was bought, and anywhere it, is, it, it was manufactured or assembled, it, the, it, the numbers are not duplicated. That is the first thing right we've noticed that we don't want to have collateral damage but this other suggestion i think it's something i would prefer more to give to a security agent if they contact me probably through through your office because it's just like the days we were talking about controlling crude oil theft there are some underwater techniques that when you suggest them on air you are empowering the criminals the thieves again 
So some of these to things further fortify themselves. Exactly. Understand. Well, but as I can, I'm afraid we have to wrap up this segment now. Ishima Efenya is saying the guest this morning is echoing my thoughts on the security issues facing our country. Thank you very much for joining us today Thank on you. Call Digest. And well, we'll love to hear. Nigeria. Amen. Amen. And Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And a Happy New Year in advance. Thank you. And well, we'll love to. to we'll love to hear from you. Keep the tweets coming. It's at Call Digest Live, and the phone lines are also showing on your screen. Green keep trying. Uh, it might be rough now, but we'll, let's hope that it gets better before the end of the show. We'll take a short break now and we'll be back with more. Don't go away. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website and Facebook. Click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station.